Hi everyone, so uh, today I'm going to be sharing with you how to make an airlock. Uh, before we start, I'm going to show off the what it's going to look like. So, uh, it would start out like this with the open door leading to the dry area and the shut door leading to the wet area. You can switch that if you'd like, I just have a like that because um, I didn't want to have the wet effect starting at the start of the match. Anyway, so then you would press this button, the water would start filling the room, and then the screen effect would change like so. And now there's water and bubbles. So now you can go ahead, leave, go into the water area, do whatever you want, and you can go ahead and come back in. Once you want to go back into the dry area, you'd press it once again, the smoke would start going off, and then the effects would go away, leading to an open door, and that door would be shut too. And another neat feature is that, let's say someone else went in there to press that button, so they started that door, that effect will not switch for me, so that they can be in the water and I will be um, still with this dry effect. So it's good if you have a lot of open areas, or different areas, that different players can go into at the same time. Uh, anyway, so now that you've seen it, if you want to see how to make that, I will now show you. So, uh, see you back in just a second. Hi everyone, so now we're in the forge mode. Um, first things first, you need to create your airlock and your room. Uh, I already made my airlock, I just copied it from the last one, and my room is right here. It's a little box. Alright, so, after that we're going to go ahead and need to create a terminal or a button. So, I'm just going to use a terminal because that's what I used earlier, although the scripting will be the same for both. So, go to scripting, go and then either go to your keypad or your terminal. All right, let me just uh, do that. Position it wherever you want, does not matter at all. Okay, so now that we've done that, we're gonna go ahead and go over to its object properties and go to the bottom of the list and add a script. On this script, the condition is going to be interacted. The action one is going to be power set, alpha, toggle, and this doesn't matter at all. Alright, so um, this will just be used to switch, to invert which side is being opened. After that, we're going to go ahead and add another script. This one will have the condition of match start. Um, the action will be power set, alpha, on. And we're going to add another script, which will be practically the same, except it's going to be on round start. Um, and then it's going to be power set, alpha, on. These are going to be used so that at the start of the match and round, the doors will open correctly. Um, so, yes, just make sure that you have those. Alright, so the next thing we need to do is create a script brain. Um, we're going to be using a couple of these script brains throughout this uh, to make the... Uh, uh, I can't even think of the word. It's the airlock, yes. So I'd recommend color coding them. Um, this one I'm just going to leave white. It's going to be the main one that we're going to be using. So the first thing we need to do with it is go over to its boundary and select box. If your airlock is a cylinder type shape, then use cylinder. After that, I'm going to go ahead and hit that. And what you need to do is make the boundary size the size of your airlock. Make sure that every part of your airlock is um, inside this boundary and do not go outside the airlock because um, this is only supposed to affect people inside of it. If it is not filled, if it does not touch every inch of this airlock, the inside of the airlock, then players inside of it can not set off the boundary. Pretty much the key is that players have to set off the bound, be inside the boundary if they're inside this room and not anywhere else. Okay, let me just... Okay. So just give me a moment while I set up this room. Whoops. Okay. And the width. There. Okay. And then my bottom. Okay. So now I've done that. It is very bright and it is very and it's also very important that you turn show to off because if you do not, then the players will be able to see these boundaries. So, um, make sure to turn that off. Perfect. Alright, 
So now that we've done that, I did not. Okay, so now you're going to go over to the object properties once again and go to add script. And do that. Okay, so the condition is going to be power check. Um, wait. Yes, sorry. So the condition is going to be power check. The channel is going to be alpha and it's going to check if it's on. The action then is it's going to send a message. Message send channel barvo. And that probably should be Bravo, but they just typed that incorrectly. All right. So that is what we're going to need for that. The next thing we need to do is create some kind of animation to show that the airlock is filling with water. Um, I use the underwater splashes, which can be found in effects. And I'll show you right here. So objects, or whoops, it's my wrong menu. There we go. Okay, extras, effects, at the bottom there's splashes. Um, you can do whatever you want though. So I just copied mine from the last room, so I'm just going to use these again. So hold up. Here we go. Okay, so you want to position them inside the room so that the, pretty much the whole room is being filled with water. Um, so there you go. And then after you've done that, go ahead and weld them together. And once you've done that, then we can start. Begin the scripting. Okay, so the first script is going to be on message received barvo action one is going to be spawn force on this is very important because if the if force on is not on or yeah force on is not on then the um then these things will not spawn if a player is standing on top of them and that's not what you want at all so okay after that, we're going to go ahead and create, once again, another script brain. So, this script brain is going to be controlling all of the um, wa the exiting into the open water animations. So, I'm going to go ahead and color this, just for color code purposes. So, I'm going to set this to be, you know, I'm going to set this to be blue. Blue for water. Okay. And then go ahead and create a script. Alright, so the condition is going to be message received on Barvo. Then action one is going to be spawn and force on. Um, same reason, just make sure that this is set like this. Okay, so then we're going to need to back out of that and add another script. This one is going to be a condition timer. So timer check. The initial is going to be 6 seconds. Okay. And the repeat is going to be 6 seconds. This is important. So if you want to have a longer or shorter animation than what I have, change these values. This is how long the animation lasts for. Alright, so the action then is going to be message send to channel charlie. And then we need to add a second action. This action is going to be, um, let's see. Sorry, that invites threw me off. Um, okay, so the second action is going to be despawn. The objects is going to be set to this add. And then this is very important that at the bottom, under options, it says always run. And that needs to be set to off. This, because if it's set to on, then the timer will always run, and it will um, just constantly be shutting the door, and it gets very annoying. So make sure that's set to off, so that it's not always running. Alright, so now we need to go back to the water effect and create another script. So let me find it in this huge puddle of water. Okay, so we need to go ahead and create another script. Um, it's going to be message received on Charlie. And then the action is going to be despawn objects keep as this add. All right. Oh yeah. Okay. And then we need to go back to the first script brain and crypt and create another script. So this one. Right here. All right. So add another script. All right. So the condition is going to be message received on Charlie. The action then is going to be boundary, the boundary change one, which is towards the end, screen effects, 
That's, yeah, sorry, that's what I meant, the screen effects one. The players, this is very important as well. The players needs to be set to boundary this. If um, It says that all objects in the boundary are affected, but it also means players. If you, this is not set to this, then it will not work. Or, well, you won't get the effect, the screen effect change. Okay, and then you want to change the filters to the underwater ones, so. Underwater and bubbles. Okay. So, the last thing we need to do is go over to the door which leads outside towards the water, and we need to add a script to it. So that is not the right door. This door, right here. Where'd it go? I appear to have lost my door. Uh, no worry, I'll spawn anyone. Alright. Good as new. Uh, right there. Alright. Perfect. So, now that we've done that, we can go ahead and create a script for it. Script 1. So the condition is going to be message received on Charlie. Under do, the action 1 is going to be move offset. This is going to be your door opening. So, move offset. Objects, leave this add. Targets, leave this add. Um, and then these numbers change it so that the door is sliding far enough. I'm just going to do horizontal 5. If you're doing this, the same door I'm doing, doing horizontal 5 or negative 5 will be good enough. Make sure to leave local on so that you're not using the global movement. Uh, look, or yeah, move, move. and then the time um, set. This will be how long it takes to open the door. I'd recommend leaving this as one. Although, do whatever if you have a bigger door or something like that. All right. So now we need to go back out of this and create yet another script. The condition is going to be power check alpha off, and the time. Or er, sorry, then the action one is going to be power position that rotation reset the time. I'd recommend having this be the same amount of time that's on the script because this is your door shutting. However, you can do whatever you want. All right, um, and then leave position on and objects this add. Okay, and then the last thing we need to do for this is go ahead and create another script. So, this is going to be power check alpha, or sorry, power check alpha on, because this one's power, yeah. Okay, so power check alpha on, and then the action is going to be the same as the last one. So position dot rotation reset, or slash rotation reset. The objects is going to be this add time, set to one second, and position leave as on. Okay, so these scripts will have the doors these two scripts right here will have the doors shut when the when you're trying to switch which door is open. All right, and then this next script you need to add one last script, uh, one last upon the one last I just said, and the condition needs to be timer check. Okay, so and then set the initial to be probably about one second longer than the animation takes. Um, this script right here is to shut the... This deals with shutting the door when the match starts. So it's important to have... just ha As long as the initial time is longer than the amount of time it takes the animation to go off of, then you're good to go. And then action 1 is going to be the position rotation reset. The time, you can actually leave at 0 because the players will not see the door shutting. There's no possible way unless they spawn in front of the door which I'd ref not recommend. Okay, and then just leave all these things on. Alright, so let me go ahead and press this button if I can find it. Here. Okay. And see, so we've got half of it working right now. And as you can see, the door opens when because this is that's how we scripted it because we're awesome right we're all awesome okay so um, now we're gonna go ahead and go back to the first scripting brain and create another script 
Halfway there, guys. Okay, so the conditions can be power check. Alpha, off. And then the action is going to be message send. Zulu. And then just leave this as that it is. It doesn't really matter. Okay, so now we need to create a pressurization animation and weld them together, just like we did with the water effect. I used the steam one. If I can, I can use. I, um, I use the steam one, which is also found in effects. Um, you know, it's somewhere in there. Trust me. Uh, I just duplicated mine from the last room, so I'm just gonna use these again. And the rotate and the movement is weird, apparently. Here. Tools. World. There we go. Okay. So, um, yeah, how I did it was I just used steam and put them in the four corners. I thought that looked kind of cool, although some of you are probably a little bit more creative, and you'll come up with these super awesome, like, laser beams running through the room scanning or for pathogens or whatever <sighs> but you can do whatever so um, now we're gonna so you need to weld them together and then create a script on them all right so the condition is going to be on message received on Zulu and then the action one is going to be spawn and force same reason as earlier so just make sure that it's set up like that um, and now we need to create up our last scripting brain this is going to be used for the um, for these things only. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to color it red. I suppose that's reddish. Yeah. All right. So now the we're going to go ahead and add another script. So on message received and Zulu. Alright, so the action one's going to be set to spawn and force on. Uh, we can go ahead and back out then, add another script, and the condition's going to be timer check. Wait, timer check. The initial's going to be six seconds. Just make sure that your animations are about the same length. It just helps the scripting go well. Alright, so have that. Okay, so just have these be the same, and probably the same amount of time as the last animation. Okay, so the action one is going to be message send, and it's going to be set to Yankee. Okay, and now we need to add another script. This one is going to be set, so despawn objects this. And then again, very important that you change always run to off, so that it's not constantly turning off your door, because that would get annoying. All right, so now we need to go back to the animation that we were just working with, so the smoke things. Okay, and go ahead and add another script. All right, so the condition is going to be message received on Yankee. The action one is going to be despawn objects this add. Okay. Go back to the original scripting brain and create another script. So, here we go. Whoops. Okay. Um, this is going to be message received on Yankee. The action one is going to be screen effects set. Um, and then the filters, I'd recommend changing to none and none. You can change it to whatever, though. So if you had a filter on your map, just change it back to that filter and the effect. All right. So the finally, we need to go over to the door, which leads to the area without water. So let's see. It's this one. OK. So go ahead and add a script to that. So the condition is going to be on message received on Yankee. Action 1 is going to be move offset here somewhere, move offset. Objects leave as this add, targets leave as this add, and then you can set it to 5 
or negative 5 or whatever. I'm going to set it to negative 5 because I like the doors sliding the same direction. And then make sure local's on and time is 1 second or longer if that's how long your uh, um, door sliding animation is. Okay, let me just shut this a little bit more. There we go. Um, Alright, so then we need to create another one. So it's going to be power check, alpha, off. The action is then going to be position rotation reset. Objects, leave as this add. Change the time to one second. Whoops, okay. And then go ahead, position on. Okay. And the third script we need to add is going to be the exact opposite. So on power state, power check alpha on, because this one was off. Um, it's going to be position, rotation, reset, time, one second, objects, this add, and position on. This will, again, be used for when the door is shutting. Alright. Okay. Let's give it a second. Alright. So then the smoke goes off, and then this... Oh! Wait, 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 wait. Default, default. What the... This thing tends to mess up when you're first doing it. So just give it a second. Here, map options. There we go. So when the water goes off, the screen change changes and the door opens. Um, okay. Then I do that. When the when the animation refuses to change, oh, you know what? I am so stupid. Remember earlier when I was said that you needed to change this, or else it doesn't work. I didn't change it. Okay. So boundary this add is very important to add, as you can see. Alright, so just make sure you do that, and don't be like me who doesn't listen to my own advice. Or just my own warning. Okay. So, the smoke goes off, and then the door opens, and it's good to go. Alright, so this one took a little bit longer than I thought. I didn't think it was going to be like a 21 minute tutorial part. But, um, I hope it helped. Uh, and make sure... If this confused you or you needed extra help or something like that, or maybe you just don't feel like doing this and you just liked how my room looked, then go ahead. I'm going to have it on my prefabs page. It isn't there yet because I'm going to I'm gonna be adding this one that I just made to it. Um, so just search us and them 76, as you can see in the upper right corner, um, and then select it and it will be here somewhere. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope, um, thanks for sticking around for that long bit, and um, I'll see you guys later, so uh, peace.